The graduation address gives us the opportunity to hear from a distinguished member of our alumni community. And we are very fortunate today that the address will be delivered by Emeritus Professor Suzanne Crow. Suzanne is a renowned physician, scientist and company board director. Professor Crow commenced her medical career after graduating from Monash University and was appointed a professor and subsequently Emeritus Professor. Her research area of expertise was the AIDS epidemic and she co-founded the first Melbourne HIV clinic at the then Fairfield Hospital and later at the Alfred Hospital. Her early scientific discoveries still have clinical relevance and underpin the failure of antiretroviral treatment to eradicate at HIV. Professor Crow was appointed the inaugural laboratory head at the new Burnett Institute with subsequent appointments of Director of Viro Virology and Associate Director of Burnett Institute. Her research focused on understanding HIV pathogenesis and comorbidities in HIV infected individuals where the clinical burden of HIV care shifted in the modern era of combination antiviral retroviral therapy. Professor Crow has also extensively supervised and mentored young scientists and medical graduates, particularly women. She's also worked as an advisor to the World Health Organization Global Program on AIDS for 25 years and was a director of St Vincent's Health Australia for nine years. She currently uses her 30 years of clinical and research experience as a non-executive director on the boards of two global ASX listed companies. I now have great pleasure in inviting Emeritus Professor Suzanne Crow to deliver the graduation address. Thank you, Provost Professor Susan Elliott, Pro Vice Chancellor of Research, Professor Mike Ryan, for inviting me to address our graduates today. And welcome to my academic colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and especially to the new graduates. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting today, past and present, who have cared for these lands for countless generations. And I thank them for sharing their space with us today. Congratulations to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders who are graduating today, but congratulations to all of our new graduates and to your families and the people who've supported you. This is a very special day, especially if you happen to be the first person in your family to graduate from university or if there is more than one person in your family graduating today. Today I will talk to you about setting your sights on your career goals and seizing opportunities that come your way. I stand here as a physician scientist, reflecting on the honour to be invited to address you today, but this moment was never a certainty, not at all. You see, I didn't do well enough in my year 12 exams to get into any university, let alone Monash University. I left school, still aged 16, to work during the day as a tra trainee medical laboratory technologist, attending lectures at night at RMIT. Then I'd put on my false eyelashes and I'd shimmy into a mini skirt and long white boots and join my rock band. I played keyboard in rock bands for around Melbourne for about eight years. It was during this time that I decided I wanted to be a doctor, but the doors were closed because of my grades. That didn't deter me. As Nelson Mandela once said, it always seems impossible until it's done. I was accepted into second year, med second year science at Monash University, and then I put in the time and the blood, sweat and tears to make sure I got three high distinctions, this way gaining entrance into Monash Medical School through what was known then as the back door. I remember exactly where I was when I got, found out I'd got into medicine. It was in December in the mid-1970s, almost 50 years ago. 
I was at Apollo Bay, it was hot, and I had been sunbaking on the beach. That news was life-changing for me, and without doubt, was one of the happiest days of my life. So it's an old story, but if it's important for you, and if at first you don't succeed in getting there, just don't give up. You've all completed your degrees despite the added pressures of this crazy and bewildering time of COVID. COVID-19 isn't the first major epidemic or pandemic that we have faced in Australia. The Spanish influenza pandemic, 100 years ago in 1919, also raged through Australia. And in the 1980s, we faced the start of the HIV epidemic. No one predicted HIV. No one predicted COVID. My career as a virologist and as an infectious diseases physician has been bookended by these two viruses. What will happen during your careers? Will there be another unexpected pandemic in 50 years time, just as your careers wind down? That's my point. No one knows. But as we emerge from COVID and you're graduating into this changed world where the way that we do things on a daily basis has been shaken, recognise that this uncertainty actually creates the most amazing opportunities for all of you. You have your degrees, but that's just the start of your story. Now follow your passions and seize opportunities as they emerge. The choices you make will make you unique and will shape your career. Sheryl Sandberg, who joined the board, board of Facebook when it still only had about 100 employees, says, if you're invited to take a, se a seat on a rocket ship, don't ask what seat, just get on. Well, let me tell you a bit about the opportunity that was my rocket, sh rocket ship seat. I had just started training in infectious diseases in early 1983, and before my eyes, a scary new infectious disease called AIDS was unfolding, mainly affecting gay men in the United States. It was a homophobic world. Most gay men in Melbourne were still in the closet. But within time, we started to see previously healthy young men filling our hospital beds. We discovered AIDS was caused by a virus, and then it was a death sentence. The lack of knowledge early on bred fear. Hospital staff, even at our major university affiliated hospitals, left food trays at the doors of AIDS patients. Surgeons found reasons not to operate on gay men. As a young infectious diseases doctor, what could be more challenging than being involved in the earliest days of a major new disease? I wanted to make a difference, and I was like you are now, ambitious, caring, enthusiastic. Some of you have felt the same way during COVID, some of you putting yourself at risk, volunteering in, in vaccine clinics. Well, you've heard that my colleague Anne Mitch and I founded the first AIDS clinic in Melbourne, which became the Victorian HIV service at the Alfred. Was that just a lucky break for me? It was certainly an opportunity that kick-started my lifelong career in HIV medicine and research. But it wasn't just a break, it wasn't just luck. I feel firmly that the person who works hard and is open to opportunities is more likely to stumble across those so-called lucky breaks. As Bruce Springsteen says, when it comes to luck, you make your own. And you should be open to opportunities and those lucky breaks that can similarly shape your careers. I was soon invited to be the president of the Australasian Society of HIV Medicine, and this opened a door to work with the Australian government. A few months later, 
the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade invited me to join the board of the Australia India Council. Now, that was really exciting for me. I'd never been to India, and now I would get to regularly travel there to establish clinical and research links. This led to my creating a total of 50 HIV clinical training programs for doctors, nurses, and laboratory scientists throughout India, which became the flagship program for the Australia India Council. I remain passionate about India. In fact, I take every opportunity I can to visit or just cook Indian curries at home or attending the weddings of my Indian uh, PhD students like this last weekend. Serving on the Australia India Council board has also opened the door for the next stage of my career as a company director. You might well ask, how can a physician scientist contribute to these companies? Well, if you remember, I said that my career had been bookended by two viruses. And on the board of St Vincent's Health Australia, with its 16 hospitals and 23 aged care facilities, all at the coalface of the COVID epidemic, my role has basically been to keep our staff and our patients safe. On the board of Sonic Health, a global, a global pathology company with 37,000 people working in pathology across Australia, Europe, and the United States. My background as a virologist is useful for a company that has performed over 11 million COVID PCR tests globally. So my advice is to say yes to any interesting opportunity, do the best job you can, and look out for the doors as they open. Before long, you will see that your career has been formed by a succession of opportunities, each that you have personally moulded. By now, some of you will have worked out exactly where you see your futures, and if so, you're lucky, but probably in the minority. For most of us, the transition from university to choosing a career can be daunting and confusing. You may have read Sylvia Plath's The Fig Tree, telling the story of Esther, a talented young English student, working for a month with a, fa a fashion magazine. She saw her life branching out like a fig tree, each branch representing a possible career choice. She's torn, sitting at the crutch of that fig tree, not being able to decide which branch to take. I think we can all relate to that fig tree. It doesn't really matter whether you are a doctor, a nurse, a science graduate, which branch you choose, every branch opens up possibilities. Just don't get stuck for too long sitting at the crutch of the tree while the rest of the world moves on. There are many different ways for each of you to have a happy life and a rewarding career. I want to thank my husband, Professor John Mills, who has always been one branch ahead of me. And I'll finish by saying to each of you, enjoy shaping your career, look out for those opportunities and those lucky breaks, take chances and celebrate the journey, be curious and never stop learning, and don't worry if you aren't perfect, because no one is. There will always be good and bad days. Just accept this and do your best. And be kind to your colleagues and to yourself along the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suzanne, for that inspiring address. The story from rock band to emeritus professor was quite eye-opening. And I, you shared so much wise advice for our graduates today, so thank you. <laughs>